What's up, you guys? Ooh, jumper. Put that to, to the side. It's Thirsty Thursday. I hope y'all are doing well. We're here for our weekly romance oracle reading. Uh, let's see what that was. New love. Wow, just leaping out at us. Just throwing itself right in our path. I love this. New love. Uh, a new person has stirred your romantic feelings or might be very soon. And, you know, if there's not a new person in the mix, I think that generally speaking, our emotional, you know, body is coming awake after a time of feeling like a hibernation period or being in a state of limbo. But I definitely feel a renewal and a resurgence of just generally like fun, playful, romantic energy with life. Uh, positive expectations uh, for good things to happen. And there is kind of a feeling like lingering of like something might be around the corner or be very close. So interesting. Let's see what else. After this video, I am going to film our uh, 2024 predictions. I'm going to do the year's overview and take a closer look at the quarterly breakdown. But that's what I'll be doing after this. Okay, so our next card is Deception. Someone is wearing a false self mask in this relationship. So this is something that... We were talking about, I believe, in last night's alchemy message video. Um, so it'll be our midweek alchemy message uh, video for um, that I posted yesterday. But there is this like this this need to be as authentic and true to ourselves and real and not people pleasing, not you know, going along to get along, no white lies, no phony, no like editing of the self right now. We, and you know, not doing things just because society expects this of us, you know, the things that we continue to do or, you know, keep up with and, and it's not even really us, it's not fully us. So right now, you know, for the last few weeks in particular, I think that we've been taking a closer look to see what is authentically us and what isn't? And I think that we're being, we're really liberated right now to shed the parts of our personality and the parts of our lives that aren't really in alignment with us anymore. Um, we're rebirthing and reinventing. And so we're really decluttering and, and trimming the fat. And so, you know, things that we just aren't really vibing with anymore it's like we have no taste for it and no energy and no resources to give so getting real with ourselves um, I think that has been a theme that's been coming up in the last week or so is facing the ways that we have been dishonest with ourselves how are we lying to ourselves how are we not being real like you know are we being um like are we are we fan are we living in a fantasy world about something are we you know not getting real about a situation are we not facing the truth are we not seeing who we really are in in, in that part that we need to see and then also so it's like we need to be honest with ourselves before we can be honest with others and it's also our own ability to be real and honest with ourselves that allows us to have real clear discernment with other, about other people, you know, because if we're lying to ourselves, it's usually about other people. We're making excuses. We're justifying, you know, red flag behavior. So, you know, be on, you know, your, be vigilant and aware that as you are moving forward in a new love cycle, let's just call this a new love cycle, right? Because, you know, there may be a flurry of possibilities and suitors that come through, right? And so as you are vetting these options and getting to know people, you want to pay attention to the red flags. You want to be your real self, right? Because you want to be attracting and nurturing relationships that are truly compatible and not just putting out like this, you know, best version of that you think of yourself, right? Um, instead of your real self, right? And you want to look around when other people are doing that as well. 
<coughs> try to see if they're, you know, presenting a false mask or if they're hiding their true feelings. Um, you know, sometimes in a darker aspect, and this is a, a popular topic now that people are more aware of, but, you know, people who are very narcissistic can be very deceptive in the beginning. Uh, they can come across as totally different person than they actually are. And so, you know, sometimes there's subtleties that present, but again, if we're not super honest with ourselves and, and being real about our discernment, then it's easy to turn a blind eye um, about those things and about those red flags. All right, what do we, what else do we need to know about this week? And this new love cycle coming up, ooh, codependency. So this will challenge our codependency. Um, you know, each of us are on a spectrum of, you know, attachment styles and, and, and codependency versus interde interdependence. And so this is something that you've been healing for a long time. Going into a new cycle of, you know, a new love cycle, you have a chance to elevate from your previous patterns that were driven by codependent motives. Um, it requires self-control, requires self-discipline. It requires us to have the trust to slow down and not feel um, an urgency to be reactive in any kind of way. And, and really look at the situation at, and, you know, really look at it for what it is, right? And so again, you know, the more codependent we are, the more likely it is that we want to lie to ourselves about... Uh, the healthy dynamics that exist within a situation instead of looking at, you know, what we don't want to see, which is, you know, going to take us out of our comfort zone, which is to break the pattern. So, you know, if you find yourself overly needy or overly attached, or maybe you're the one that's the savior all the time, right? That's codependent too. If you need to be the helper and you need to be the doer of everything, um, you know, that, that has its own codependency. Codependency in its broadest sense is, are you playing out a role that you identify with so much that you need to surround yourself with people that perpetuate that role for you. There is a dynamic that you need to be in to feel, um, to feel real, <laughs> to feel, uh, there's like an identity that, and a, and a pattern that you've identified with on, a, on an unconscious level to the degree that it is like your default state and it's your natural state to be in a dynamic where you play this part. And there can be different codependent relationships that you have with different people. Um, so pay attention in your life and, and try to address each relationship. Okay, where are there any code, codependent dynamics here? You know, am I always the one that's doing this and they're always the one that's doing that? You know, is it equal or is it always this role playing out? Um, and then, you know, this is our chance to break those, those patterns. So the ones that we, you know, we need to break them in all the relationships. Um, because it's all related. All right. And heart to heart conversations, honestly discuss your feelings with one another. So again, you know, being authentic, uh, you know, this is a new love cycle, new opportunities for different types of, you know, relationship dynamics that you may not have ever had. Right. So honestly discussing feelings um, as opposed to covertly, you know, being manipulative to get your way. And, you know, again, a lot of times we don't even realize that we are doing things that are considered manipulation. And so, you know, you may be innocently being manipulative and not even realizing it. So again, you know, educate yourself on what that looks like so that you can recognize it not only coming from others, but in from yourself and, and be able to break that because it's going to, it's probably been a skill that you have developed and sharpened um, unbeknownst to your awareness to navigate your way through codependencies, right? 
Um, and so, you know, honestly discussing your feelings steers you out of the realm of being manipulative because you're not passively aggressively suggesting what you would like. You're just coming right out and, and telling someone, you know, or talking about your needs, talking about how, you know, you've perceived things and, and how that has made you feel, um, how their actions have, you know, uh, affected you and, and whatnot. And so instead of holding it in and building resentment, you know, it's like clearly discuss how certain dynamics make you feel so that you can have healthy boundaries and a more productive, happy relationship. You know, this could even be relationships with siblings, friends, family. It's not necessarily, you know, limited to your romantic relationships. These, um, these romance, romance readings are specifically, you know, centered around our love lives, but our love lives are also it, like an extension of that is, is also family love and friendship and all of those relationships too. And so the, the health of those relationships is going to also impact and determine the kind of health that we can have in our romantic relationships too. So Honestly, discussing feelings, um, don't hold in, you know, things that are like that cross a line for you or that like made you feel, you know, not too great. It's communicate that, right? Don't let it build up over time. Um, and also if you, you know, if you're liking someone and don't, you don't have to hide it. You don't have to like throw it all out there right in the beginning, but <clears throat> Don't play it so cool that they don't notice that you like them. <laughs> All right, let's get a little bit of clarity and insight about new love. Let's get a deeper look into that. What else do we need to know for that? I feel like, no, oh, it was this one. Ooh, dreams and daydreams and decisions. So seven of cups in reverse actually so seven of cups is about illusions and daydreams and choices and thinking about your options and sort of daydreaming and planning or you know fan fantasizing about what you would like in a partner or if you are you know thinking about a couple of different options it's like huh you know, thinking about this person's qualities versus that person's qualities. Well, in reverse, I'm feeling that this can be either spending too long in a dream world and not actually taking action or like not like could also be like deluding yourself about someone um, or like like living in a fantasy about a person or a situation because the deception card is here too and the codependency and heart to heart conversations. So again, it's like if you have heart to heart conversations with a person who is putting on a false front and it's going to be unhealthy, then that information can come out faster right then if you don't have you know the conversations and you're not really fully upfront and honest about yourself but i don't know why i feel like i want to read the eileen conley because i feel like there's two aspects here of you know getting clear about what you want but but also getting clear through some really deep like you know like the, the clouds are finally clearing up i uh, yeah. <clears throat> okay seven of cups in reverse okay on the right track you should pursue your goal follow your goal and don't waste time success is yours down the line watch for any glimmer of success and follow it through don't give up your ideas it may be hard to carry them through but ignore any opposition Offer your insecurity up in prayer and it will be replaced with spiritual strength. Persist in studying and you can reap great rewards. So again, like looking then with real discernment, getting really clear and honest is going to help you stay on the right track and see truly like, okay, 
I'm clear about what I want. I have thought long and hard about what it is in a partnership that I'm looking for. And now I can go after this, like with a lot of clarity and intention in this new cycle. Love that. Love that. Okay. So let's get a little bit more insight into deception here. Oy. Okay, rest and recover. So nine of wands. This is like the last stretch to really breaking a long and like stubborn pattern. Um, something very persistent. Um, overcoming a wound that you've carried for a very long time. Um, persisting through the breaking of a habit or an addiction. But this is like the, the ninth step that culminates this spiritual um, battle to overcome a part of the self that, that has been holding you back from being fully self-realized. So, you know, this is taking time out, not acting too quickly, but taking the time to look at the situation and practicing restriction and self-control to see through anything that's not fully authentic or real or true. Any, any ways that in the past you have fallen prey to someone else's deception, right? Maybe their intentions aren't what they appear, or maybe their intentions aren't what you hope they are. Um, maybe like for instance, in the past I have you know, maybe stayed in relationships long term that I believed would lead to marriage, but were with people who told me in the beginning that they did not believe in marriage, right? And this was like a long time ago. But that would be an example of, okay, how have you been dishonest with yourself, you know, about the way that something is going or unrealistic? So getting over long held patterns that have held you back from what you want. Um, and then seven, seven and seven, amazing. So the chariot here is our major arcana card. It's coming up and it's here. It's like, well, as we overcome these parts of the wounded ego that keep us circling through those patterns and, the, and those same lessons, the more that we heal that, the more that we break that hold on us, the more forward momentum that we will have um, in, in attaining what we want and what we see that's possible for our love lives. But it's like the more that we get honest with ourselves and like cut through the crap and, and we, we, we're, we don't allow others to deceive us as well. Like we actually like take the red flag and do something with it and we don't keep staying in, in that same situation. You know, we, we call people on their bluff. Like we, you know, if they're showing us that they're not healthy, we don't stick around. You know, we don't continue to invest in something that's not going to give us the what's in alignment with our with our true um, love goals. Okay, so let's get a little bit more insight on codependency. Teach. So this is the Hierophant card. This is about like being... Um, bringing unity into a situation, um, being a, a leader and a teacher in an established like setting or in a, in, you know, in a traditional, like in a college or a, an established program or community, um, but in, as it re is in regards to this, I feel like that your experience of relationships has taught you a lot and you've come a long way to overcome codependency and there's a lot that you can actually teach and share with others and it's the more that you heal your codependency the more you will have to give and to share um, in relationships and in you know just the way that you can share your light and and your insight with those around you as well but Yeah, it's like, it feels like the more that we heal, the more momentum, the more solidly we are establishing things, you know, um, maybe finding a coach that is specifically 
like expert like their expertise is around healing from codependency you know maybe look into a book about that and and go further into healing your codependency but in like in the future all the things that you've done to heal yourself might like you might be teaching others as well about it i mean maybe not in a, an official capacity but you might be like sharing so much like your healing will help teach others how to heal their codependency as well all right, and then heart to heart conversation, you know, and then and you you might also be like as you heal your codependency, you might step up as the spiritual leader in your relationship and set that example to someone who's also healing, you know, on the spectrum of their codependency, and you can't you you're like okay, I've given this a lot of thought, I've been working on this a long time, I know that these are my uh, you know weak spots. I know I'm, I need to watch out for that and you know, you can help, you can, you can help be the leader um, of your, in your relationships and set that example for the, the other person in the, that you're dating. And that way that they feel that they can be open and honest about who they really are too, right? And when you feel like you can be vulnerable and honest and authentic um, and that you both know like, hey, you know, these are, no one's perfect, right? So these are my flaws. This is what I'm working with. And you can work together in unity with a common goal. So much easier to get through relationship challenges when you have a common goal to get through them. And then Empress, uh, we have Empress coming through in heart to heart conversations. So the way that I pulled it out originally, it was in reverse. And so I feel like if we're not having honest conversations, then it's going to keep us blocked from getting what we want. However, as you are having those heart-to-heart -heart conversations, be careful not to overshare or have these conversations before they are ready to be had or else that might turn what you want upside down too. Um, it might prevent you from getting what you want pace yourself, take your time, um, you know, no, what, no need to rush. What's the hurry? Um, sometimes if you like, it's not that you don't want to be honest and real about who you are, but you don't want to overshare too early, right? You want to pace things out. There's an enjoyment and like slowly getting to know someone and not being overwhelmed by like taking in their whole life history all at once. Right? So, Take your time. Um, and then also too, it's like the, you know, this piece that I'm getting right now, it's like when you are honest about what you want, um, it will weed out what you don't want as well. And, you know, sometimes you, you know, you might be not getting what you think you want, but in the end, you know, it, it's protection, you know, rejection is God's protection and, and what, is not in alignment with what you want will, you know, actually that's not true. Sometimes what's not in alignment with what you want won't just take care of itself. Sometimes you have to be very like determined to get rid of, uh, you know, someone who's very comfortable in your presence and likes your attention and they don't want to give you what you want long term. Like you have to make an effort to practice restriction and, and remove them from your, from your life. Okay, you guys, I think that is all for today. Uh, so yeah, new love cycles are happening this week, but you know, it's going to be really um, helpful for us to be really honest with ourselves um, and honest when we're like, like uh, observing other people and how, who they are and how they're presenting, being honest with our, you know, level of where we are on the spectrum of codependency and healing that. And then being able to communicate authentically, right? Without revealing too much too soon um, and without holding back and, and without being, um, without being, uh, not dishonest, but uh, maybe we'll just call it inauthentic. Holding like, not revealing. Oh, I can't think of the word. All right, y'all. I am going to now record our 2024 yearly prediction. So I will see y'all later. Ciao.